This might get weird. Are we rolling? We're rolling. Cheers, Grace Helvig. Cheers, Memory Hark. You Ching-ching. guys, if you are listening to this and not watching it, Grace and I are not in the same room. No. Be it my kitchen where I've hidden all the liquor bottles out of sight or <laughs> my dirty little dungeon. I know it does. It is a very different vibe when we're sitting in your kitchen to podcast versus that little back house. Uh, I feel very much like we should be doing some sort of like Selena Gomez in the kitchen cooking tutorial or something. See, I feel like we've done so many YouTube videos yeah. from that counter that when we're podcasting from there, I'm like, oh, we're uh, blindly l- we're blindfold tasting mustard given to <laughs> us by Hannah. Like, yeah, we're figuring out which apple is which. Like yeah. I'm constantly cutting my eyes away as if I'm going to like, <laughs> this is where I'll, I'll zoom in really quick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, no, my goodness. Memory, you are in North Carolina. North- North Carolina, y'all. Um, Chip is here for Bar Rescue. They're rescuing some damn bars Ooh-hoo. in the Charlotte area. So Ooh. I'm staying with him and uh, and then just kind of doing like day trips to see my mom and visit friends and whatnot. But nice. it is it is a vibe because we're in this like little hotel. Okay. Usually they're booked out and they have like a kitchenette. Right, and things right. like that because yeah. they're on the road so much. But this one is tiny and it's rainy and Beans thinks she's been kidnapped and I hate her. <laughs> she, like, you can't see her. She's You can see her oh, ears. I see the little ears. Yeah, they she look is, mad. She's pissed. <laughs> like today it feels like Seattle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. she absolutely is like, why are we uprooted? Are we on the run? Right. Do I have a new identity? Right. What's my new name? <laughs> Am yeah, I going yeah. back to Miss? What was it? Mandy, Misty or something? Mindy. 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 That's it. <laughs> Which Chip, Chip fully pulls out when he wants to be real mean. It's like a parent saying, Grace Ann Helbig. Yeah, it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. well, if, this, if it isn't Mindy. <laughs> so, yeah. So we're in North Carolina and going to be here like another week. Nice. Yeah, That's nice. That's I like fun. it because you can do guest stars, guest starring with family. Are you like, guest starring at all on the bar, bar rescuing? No, Grace, I have to tell you about this. Uh oh, okay. we we need to do it together. Yeah, because they're sh- they're shooting two episodes in California, mm-hmm. and I was like, I'm pretty sure Grace and I could do this very well together. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to just sit and look confused at the service that's happening. <laughs> well, for a second, for a second, I thought um, I was going to be doing it here. And yeah. it's specifically the night where they like send in someone to go order stuff. Oh, and, like, okay. Figure it out. And then, you know, you know, to kind of like just see what's going on when they're not expecting it. Yeah. But what's I, a normal customer experience? And I legit got started to get nervous about it <laughs> because I was like, oh, no. Oh, God. What if I... <laughs> Also, I'm such a bougie asshole when it comes to cocktails that mm. I'm the worst person to send into a bar. <laughs> to that find sucks. the average experience there. Oh. Yeah, also, I'd be like, what kind of disguise should I wear? And it'd just be <laughs> the most obvious weird thing that people, their service staff would be ignoring me anyway. And be like, does you anyone just- want to take that girl with the mustache? <laughs> you would just undercover boss it? Yeah, exactly. For no reason. <laughs> For no Underco- reason. Undercover boss, it felt like they would send in someone with like, have you ever seen those helmets that have wigs on them? Yes. That, yeah. Like that's what, that's what the, <laughs> if I would like, like to see. Like your head twice the size of a normal person. Yeah. Like, um, I would love to go back and look at all of what the undercover, um, outfits look like. I always felt like they had weird, bad prosthetics or something. Yeah. That, <laughs> that nowadays in how advanced like makeup and uh, special effects are that it's like totally obvious. There's a strange person with a fake face coming in to watch us work right yeah. now. Like everyone <laughs> looked like Biff and back to the future too, where you see he's yeah. like an old man. Um, no, but so I got kind of nervous and luckily I didn't, I I didn't need to do it for them. They they got someone else, but I was like, Grace and I are going to do it, and I just cannot even. I'm going to be so giggly. Would, We're going to have to do the best earpiece? acting we've ever done. Do you have to wear an earpiece? I don't. I don't know if I'm allowed to tell these secrets. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I get it. I get it. So I don't want to yeah. overstep, but uh, okay. but it'll be fun. <laughs> I mean, have you ever done like you? Well, you've done undercover stuff because you did the I've done serving. Like, 
I've done man on the street warrants. stuff in New York mm-hmm. where I've done like a pilot for an MTV prank show in like 2010 or something okay. um, with comedians where I, with Kurt Brownoller and I, yes. Brownoller, we had to pretend that we were, he was a magician on the street and I was his assistant and I messed up the magic trick and like killed the bird that was in his <laughs> like magic box. And then he and I got into a huge fight in like the middle of Washington Square Park in front of everyone. And then oh he just God. ran away and like left me there in front of everyone. It was just getting everyone's reactions. That was, um, yeah. I put in my time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay not going that far into the fantasy. Well, you know, I did the hidden camera show. Yes. For the pilot for MTV as well. That was Cash Cab, but in a women's restroom. Yes, yes, yes. Called um, the ladies room. Yeah, it's it's easy to see why none of these got legs under but them. But now, but now I wonder, I feel like if MTV Viacom yeah. was smart, here's some industry talk for you. Here you go. Here you go. If if they were smart because their channel is I mean, it's ridiculousness 23 hours a day. Yes, yes it is. The show ridiculousness. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if they were smart, they would like sell a season of a show to Netflix or something that was uh, just failed pilots with people in it who have gone yeah. on to bigger things. Well, that's, I, I think I've said this on the podcast before that- like, I think I've gone on to smaller things, but you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember meeting with like their uh, development execs years and years and years and years ago, like 2009. 2010 and they had told us about um some of their worst pitches and one was from mariah carey that she wanted to do a reality show where the cameras were just on the collars of her dogs all day which is brilliant honestly i mean this is pre-youtube now there's so many prank things on youtube now uh constantly even like the genuine stuff i constantly think is um fake so everything on youtube is fake (laughs) and no longer no longer are the days where people are just truly blind fold taste testing yeah. mustard eating putting out of diapers and just you know being their authentic selves now nowadays if you were doing a mustard taste test yeah. someone would put in like itching powder or yeah <laughs> and then someone will comment like why is this only mustard why haven't you included ketchup and mayonnaise yeah. in this mm-hmm. condiment uh challenge it's everyone. not inclusive enough everyone uh, would be mad okay everyone. enough about um industry <laughs> yes it, <laughs> you you went to canada this weekend i did i went to montreal Tell me everything with my dad and my brother uh we went to for my dad's birthday we bought him, all of us tickets to go to a tennis tournament the national bank open formerly the rogers cup um Whoa. And, yeah i don't know i mean it's just it's banks buying things and rebranding it but mm-hmm. i haven't traveled international well, we went to mexico but other than that i haven't traveled internationally since before the pandemic and Ooh. uh it went totally smoothly it was a well, great great weekend also traveling to mexico versus like traveling to canada where there's so many people who like would love to just accidentally stay in canada i feel like it'd be a different different border vibes yeah well they tell you to download this app and to do all these things and like my dad and my brother don't travel very much so i was like trying to do it all for all of us and so Mm -hmm. i was super paranoid that i had like booked the wrong thing got the wrong flights whatever but we got in it was super fun. Montreal is super French, which I forget about uh, all the time. Um, but before we flew in, there's a funny story. I flew into Philadelphia Thursday night and I landed at like 1130 at night or something. And I went to a hotel um, in the middle of Philly and just tired from being on the plane. And got oh, yeah. The- well, well, you had tra- plane stuff. Yeah, I my we went to dinner the night before all of us, and then uh, at dinner found out that like my flight was switched from different airports at different times. So I was just like happy to get there. Um, yeah, and so landed, and was just like God, I would love a drink, but everything's closed. And then got mm-hmm. to the front desk, and the guy was like, "You have a mini bar in your room?" And I was like, "Yes." <gasps> And I was like, sorry, I just screamed yes in the middle of this <laughs> lobby right now. I mean, that's very cool. A lot of hotels nice. don't have that anymore. Um, but it's like the weighted system. So he's like, be careful about the weights or whatever. Um, I mean, can you imagine just being very clumsy and just well, not just going in there and just knocking over? 
free well, thing and that I just get, cost you eight hundred dollars i know i get into the room and i go to open the mini bar and it's locked and it's one of those that you know we've been in hotels before where you call the front desk and they can unlock it from the front desk it's um, you know what it's shame because the thing is is i'm like unless you have someone that's under 21 yeah renting this room and then you can flag it this yeah. is the same thing as locking up lube and condoms like let me <laughs> let me do my dirty stuff without your looks well it's also like two minutes after i just went yes, yes. at the front desk i have to call the front desk and say hello it's me again um yeah. the mini bar is locked can you unlock it from the front desk and he goes huh i get this question a lot and i don't have an answer to it so do you want to know what I used to do when I stayed here? <laughs> I was like, well, yeah. I'm he intrigued. Goes, so when you pull it open, you know, it opens a little bit. He's like, just put your fingers in there and just pull. And I was like, you want me to just rip it? He's like, yeah. And I <gasps> put my fingers in and I pull and it, like the whole thing snapped. Open. No. <laughs> and he goes, oh, I heard it. Yeah, you did it. I was like, yep, it's open now. But everything fell out. <laughs> And did you I get charged for on, everything no i was like can you just put that on the record that uh, uh all these weighted things you worried uh, you warned me about they all fell out but um thank you your pull out method worked for me this time what an american <laughs> hero it was pretty amazing do you want to know what i did when i used to stay here yeah um so that can happen in hotels uh which is very cool and felt also very philly to just be like give me this booze right now also what's the staying here to employment pipeline like right if this is where he's from how often was he staying in this hotel was he getting free right. nights because he already worked there what's the vibe? i don't know or is this his dream job that he loves his hotel and now he finally mm -hmm. works there like my dream oh, yeah. job when i worked at chili's for the first time it's like this like is my dream restaurant he would stay there and study yeah, what needed like, to be done. One day if, I'll work here. <laughs> if, if the corners of the hotel bed were crisp enough. Yeah. Finding all of your grocery items in one place at an affordable price is almost impossible. But now with Thrive Market, I get everything I need and so much more. With Thrive Market, you can shop everything from healthy pantry essentials and sustainable meat and seafood to non-toxic cleaning and beauty products all delivered right to your door. And if you find a price lower elsewhere, Thrive Market will match it. They'll match it. Thrive Market carefully vets each and every item so you can trust that if they sell it, it is probably the highest quality available. Finding everything you need is easy on Thrive Market because you can filter by 90 plus values and lifestyles to find what works for you. Shop by what you eat, what matters the most to you. With over 5,000 food, home, and beauty products, finding what you need is easy with Thrive Market. If you're looking for plant-based, keto, gluten-free, zero waste, BIPOC-owned brands, Thrive Market has you covered. I've ordered a lot of organic makeup from there. Recently, I got a Zoom Mist Sandalwood Citrus Body Spray that makes me feel like I'm a yogi when I'm at Absolutely not. And I've never seen that available anywhere else. I'm a big, big fan. When you join Thrive Market, you're joining a community of 1 million plus members and sponsoring a family in need. And with their fast and free carbon neutral shipping, you're also bettering the planet. So join Thrive Market today and get $80 in free groceries. Do you hear me? $80. That's Thrive, T-H-R-I-V-E, market.com slash T-M-G-W to get $80 eight zero in free groceries that's thrivemarket.com slash tmgw thrivemarket.com slash tmgw you guys know me i am always on the go 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 however i have huge aspirations to be a person who reads a person who says oh i devoured that novel in one sitting but the fact is i'm bad at reading that's why we have our patreon only book club the bar flies so let me let you in on a little secret I like to get a copy of a book and then make it coincide with the Audible version. I love Audible. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, mysteries, thrillers, motivation, wellness, business, all of those things, as well as Audible originals from top celebrities, renowned experts, and exciting new voices in audio. And we know you guys like to listen to things because you're here at this podcast. And as an Audible member, I I have been a loyal one for several years. You can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. All Audible members get access to a growing
growing selection of audiobooks, Audible Originals, and podcasts, which we know you love, that are included with the membership. And you can listen to all you want and more get added every month. You guys, this go round of barflies we are listening to lessons in chemistry it is so fun i go between reading the book and listening to the audiobook when i'm on a plane when i'm taking beans for a walk it's a really cool way to uh, both hear the story and read the story so let audible help you discover new ways to laugh be inspired or be entertained new members can try it for free for 30 days visit audible.com slash tmgw or text tmgw to 500 500 that's audible.com slash tmgw or text tmgw to 500 500 to try audible free for 30 days audible.com slash tmgw i'm telling you you're you're gonna love it. Uh, but we went to Montreal and saw tennis. I forgot that I love tennis and I forgot yeah. that it is like the bougiest sport, which is oh, very yeah. fun because we're not a very bougie family by any means. My dad was, um, my dad had like two beers into him, was asking how you can scream kick his ass in French. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, dad, no, I'm not Googling that for you. He's like, how do you say kick his ass in French? I am obsessed. (laughs) It was so, so fun. Um, And then it came back. And so now I'm back in tennis. The U.S. Open's happening in a couple weeks. So I'm excited to watch it. It was great. I I love that you went out of country with your brother and dad for several days to Canada. And the old... you're like, nope, just tennis. We got nothing else to give you. No late yeah. night poutine shenanigans. No nothing. No, just we, tennis we, all day. We saw two matches in one day, um, which were like long, like two or three hour matches. And, and then, that's like day drinking, right? Yeah. Well, we walked around Montreal because the only time I had been there before was for the Just for Laughs Festival. So we went the first night we got there. We went to dinner like right in that area and I was like Uh this is the only area that I'm familiar with (laughs) um and uh, I was telling them about the Jeff Dunham story um (laughs) they felt for you uh and I was like in (laughs) this hotel there's a bar where all the comedians gather and it is a clusterfuck to say the least and I have had the worst many many drinks there uh before but then we walked around the city the next morning and I was like, wow, this is a beautiful city actually- when you when you go outside of this like three block radius that we're like confined to the whole time we were there last time. Yeah. Uh, Montreal to us is VidCon. You're just in a hotel. Yeah. I also found it was very funny right before I left. I found um, Canadian dollars from, I think, our oh shows God. there eight years ago. And I I yeah, because I was like, I've been packing these canadian dollars with me from house to house and place that i moved Wait, in that and was I, good money i know well i'm gonna get it exchanged <laughs> i went there but i was like afraid Live to it use up. it i was afraid to use Why? it and then we went to this one bar and i used it and the girl just looked at it and she went this is really old money <gasps> and i was like yeah <laughs> it is really old is it still good and she was like yeah it's i think so and like went over and told the other bartender because i guess they've changed or updated their dollars since so it's like you went in with like little old gross (laughs) 20s like sacagaweas i guess (laughs) i was like can i pay for these drinks please they must have been like did your grandfather bury a tin box full of money upon his passing exactly and And my dad because i told my dad and my brother when we were on our way there that i brought it just in case like you know credit cards or whatever um my dad actually hilariously went to get coffee one morning came back he's like i tried to pay with a five dollar bill she said no Really? Uh, they don't take, you know, American money. Oh, uh, right. I was like, that's like me going to the gas station here and paying with this old Canada money. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they're like, I, and that's then we so funny. asked some other bartender about it and she was like, yeah, the old Monopoly money. Yeah, that's not what we have anymore. <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess I won't use this to pay and I hope I'm not like on some list to be detained on Holy at the airport shit. when I get there. I wonder yeah. if they'll even like exchange that money now. I know that's what I'm like a little confused about but right. it worked for the two rounds of drinks that I got. The The two women bartenders seemed 
delighted, delighted <laughs> charmed by it. I was like, thank God we look like gangly, awkward, like non-threatening weirdos <laughs> to use this, what looks like actual play money. Wow. Um, yeah, but it was super fun. It was super chill. And, and so uh, now you're in it. Now you're in the tennis is life again. Yeah, not life, but like I'm excited. When you watch it live, it's just like it's so much more athletic than when you watch it on TV. So that was really cool to see. Um, and also like none of my family, like we played tennis a bunch, but like we're terrible at it, all things considered. So to watch people that are really good at it is very fun and to scream at them like we're good at it and they should be better at it. (laughs) Um, do you think you're going to play now? Um, I don't know because it's like, it's a whole commitment to go play and like, it's not a, you have to find someone else to play with. That's kind of at your level or at your patient's level. Well, (laughs) maybe I'll play some VR tennis or something to slowly get back into it. Chip tried to teach me during the pandemic and we only went once and I want to go back, but I have a tendency when I'm learning something new because I want to be good at stuff as soon as I start. Same, same. That... With both tennis and when we took a forging class, yeah. which is a lot of working your dominant arm. Yeah. To me, it was about feeling the strength mm-hmm. and like, as opposed to form. Yeah. Both things, the next day I couldn't lift that arm. Oh, my so arms like, are so weak right now <laughs> that if I went to play, I'd hit the ball like twice and be like, I just dislocated my shoulder. I yeah. can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> However, I do love how often in films people get hit by balls with one of those machines. Constantly. And also I feel like every reality show I've been playing, they've had like a filler moment where people go play tennis and they're terrible at it. And it's just for them to go sit down and have a conversation at some point. I truly, yeah, I think that like tennis is definitely a sport that allows you to be able to talk during it. You know what I mean? Totally. Also, it's one of those things where it's rare to find on um, public courts uh, one by itself. And I am not consistently hitting a ball only on my court. It's going across no. court. It's ruining other people's times and games. Yes. It's interrupting their personal space. So, and then you have that weird dance of like, am I supposed to get hi, their ball? Hi, hi, like, hi, at what, yeah. like at what point do, do I just say, I don't care that it's six feet away. It's yours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I've uh, been on a tennis maybe. court twice and... 20 years and it was one chip giving me the lesson yeah and two taking an ass photo and yeah. that was it <laughs> that's it both uh extremely mm-hmm. physical <laughs> um i would like to report speaking of travel that i did mm. successfully bring beans here without paying for her really Again. okay mm. but it was dicey for a second because yeah. we get to the airport and all is well and we like killed it and we're both you know tsa and clear and we get through yeah we we go have a glass of champagne we go get some burgers impossible yeah. and regular nice um and we're like chilling and timing it perfectly and then we get to our gate and then they're like Oh, we're being delayed for like two hours, essentially. Uh, And and we knew we had a connection in Minneapolis and we knew we weren't going to make it. And Chip had work the next day. And so it was one of those moments where immediately everything just got stressful. When it was like we were like walking on sunshine. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So then Chip immediately just calls Delta. Right. And there's a and there's a certain line you call if you're platinum. Oh, nice. pro tip, pro tip. And he's talking to this woman and he's being like extremely calm and walking through what's going on, whatever. And I'm just like, we're fucked. Like, I'm already looking up like we've only found middle seat red eyes uh, in, co- in coach. And uh, we were com- and we were comfort. Right. Yeah. So he's calling and he's being like, the only thing we're finding is middle seat coach. Uh, and like we were already comfort and like yeah. what's going on and she's saying like there's nothing available whatever and yeah. then he goes like but what about first class right yeah so then he hangs up he looks at me he goes we got to go to another terminal we've got a flight in 45 minutes and we're bumped up to first <gasps> nice i mean he was a hero man that he's best at that at scrambling and finding stuff when he found our covid test station when we had to leave mexico that was mm-hmm. so helpful but uh, i just 
but so we we run to the other terminal and I've got beans and I'm letting her walk whatever. <laughs> and so the woman told us she was like to make sure that your luggage gets taken off into the ne- and into the next one, go to the desk and like show them your luggage tag. Right. So as soon as we walk up, the woman goes, "Oh, you have a dog? Check in over there." And I was like, "We've been had." Oh we no, fi- we, we finally made. get a first class bump, and <laughs> and we're gonna get caught. Here it is. But no, we figured it out, and she nice. and she crushed it. So amazing. That's overall. Um, Great travel day. <laughs> that's well. That's what happened to me. I was supposed to be in first class flying out. Uh, I know with a layover, and then they switched me to a different airport economy middle seat. And so I was switching checking, to a different airport is insane. Yeah. I, so I was checking like crazy for any window aisle. Finally, like 15 minutes before I left, there was a window seat open, so I switched my seat. And then I get on the flight. And, you know, I think I was maybe one of five or six people on the flight wearing a mask. And the girl, the girl that was that was in the middle seat in this row, she's wearing a mask and she's wearing Disney stuff and she's got glasses and she's got a big pin on that says like, you know, the happy birthday pin that they give you at Disneyland. Oh, and so I'm like, you know, I had a couple of vodka sodas and I was like, happy (laughs) birthday as I was getting over to the seat next to her. And, uh. And she was like, thank you. And I was like, how was Disney? And she was like, really great. I still wish I was there. And I was like, totally get it. Oh, wow. We didn't say a word to each other the rest of the flight. But the woman next to her on the aisle was this older woman with like this very long skirt. She looked kind of hippie. And I was like, this must be this girl's mom. Um, And I'm like texting with Elliot, letting him know like I got a window seat. And uh, then the woman ordered a beer and I was like Disney mom's ordering a beer okay yeah I'm gonna I don't feel bad like screaming over this Disney girl that like I would like another vodka soda please (laughs) and then we get off the flight and I'm walking out and I realize Disney girl is Disney adult woman with a Disney fiance that was in the middle seat on the aisle across from us and the two of them with their Disney luggage walked out into the Disney luggage and these were full grown adults. I thought I was sitting next to a 12 year old the whole time, the whole time. No, and baby. I, the she mask, was at least 18. She was probably 32, to be mm-hmm. honest. And it was just I wasn't making direct eye contact. I was just kind of keeping to myself, thinking that this young girl and her mom were coming back from her birthday in Disney. I was like, oh, OK. Well, that See, must have been fun for me to be like, how was Disney <laughs> when I got on the phone? for your 13th birthday no we had one more one more plain thing we had a weird like uh people not sitting together thing because when we got on our flight chip was in the first row and i was in the second he would you know i was a window he was an aisle so we kept we were doing the dance of like waiting for someone to mm-hmm. come sit beside me so I could be like a would you like to switch yeah. with my boyfriend because I couldn't go up there because I had the secret dog yes 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's a small condition <laughs> I can't first row it no. uh, so anyway so he's sitting up there with like a mom and a daughter yeah and she's he like figures out that like the dad is also on this flight so Mm -hmm. in our perfect world we're like maybe the dad's beside me boom wham crushing it right so the dad comes on he talks to the little girl and the and the mom and he starts to put his bag up Uh in the overhead yeah so chip thinking he's about to go sit beside me because it's the only open seat left in first yeah goes oh sorry are you in first class like to ask him if he wants to like switch seats with him and the guy thinks he's saying why are you what putting are you? your bag in first class? Oh, no, he yeah. thinks he thinks Chip is policing, yeah. right? So oh, then no. I'm in row five, just watching the guy go. No, I'm not. Sorry, are you scared? My bag will crush your gold bars. That's what he said. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. oh my god, oh my god, what is happening? And so eventually, the guy just leaves, and Chip is like, looks to the woman and goes, "I was just seeing if he wanted to switch seats so he could sit with you." If he was in first class and like and explains it to her. But like the guy fully goes back further into the plane thinking that Chip is just some asshole being like, are you in first class? Why are you putting your bag up? Don't let your bag touch my bags. He literally said wouldn't want it to crush your gold bars. I was like, oh, my God. (laughs) I would have gone through the window if I didn't have a secret dog in my lap. Yeah, at least uh, <laughs> the family was sitting next to Chip for him to, for him to give them the context of that and that man didn't have to live 
for the rest of his life thinking that this guy is the biggest asshole he's ever seen. <laughs> or like just the people around us thinking yeah, that yeah, like yeah. Chip was doing that. It's like, no, he was he was trying to help her help them out. Uh, killed me though. I was like, get I was like, please close the cabin door. We've got this guy thinking that Chip is like a dickhead. Yeah. I've got a secret dog. Like, come on, come on. Yeah, and then Beans just throws up from under whatever secret blanket you have her on. <laughs> and you two are now disrupting the entire flight. As soon as it started, I was like, I will take a champagne. Thank you so much. How perfect. I don't know about you, but when I find something new that I love, I become obsessed with it. That's why all of us love binging a TV show in a couple of sittings. Or I find a restaurant I like, you know I am ordering from that place three times that week. And that goes for shoe wear as well. Specifically, Rothy's. Rothy's can be your new everyday shoe obsession. Rothy's shoes give you right out of the box comfort, come in amazing styles and colors, and get this, you can wash them. That's right, people. It is summer. These feet be sweating. They be stinking. But Rothy's can get you back to square one. And transitioning from summer to fall is easy with Rothy's. They have so many colors. You can wear from season to season without going out of style. And it's easy to see why millions of women wear Rothy's shoes every single day. I wore a pair of Rothy's Chelsea boots and like a nice tan color on a whole tour, which, you know, Grace and I are up up there. They're flailing around, sweating, getting nervous at our meet and greets. So luckily, I could just give those a clean. And you guys didn't even know I'd been rocking those Rothy's all over the United States of America. They're extremely comfortable. They come in classic styles. And there's just so many different patterns and colors to choose from. You are going to find your favorite. So step up your shoes and accessories this summer and get ready to be asked Excuse me, are those Rothy's? Plus, get 20% off your first purchase at rothys.com slash weird. That is $20 off your first purchase at R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash weird. I suggest the Chelsea boot. They are cute. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like checking in your baggage at the airport without a lock. You think your stuff is kept private, but you never know who's going through it. And maybe you got a pair of panties wrapped around some tiny plastic hands because you did a comedy show the night before. But you don't need anyone to see that. When you go online without a VPN, internet service providers, ISPs, can see every single website you visit. They can legally sell this information without your consent to ad companies and tech giants who then use your data to target you. So browse more anonymously. When you use ExpressVPN, ISPs cannot see your online activity. Your identity is anonymized. It's anonymous by a secure VPN server. Your data is also encrypted for maximum protection. It's easy to use. You just fire up the app and you click one button. It works on all devices, phones, laptops, even routers. So everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can be protected. Goose agrees. (laughs) So not only is ExpressVPN great for keeping your browser history anonymous to everyone, I love to use it because you can connect to uh, internet service providers in international uh, areas and potentially watch, I don't know, shows like The Great Pottery Throwdown uh, that's only available, you know, six months before it's available in the U.S., in the U.K., and you can watch that right away. That's how I use ExpressVPN. So if you're interested, secure your online activity by visiting expressvpn.com slash TMGW today. That's E-X-P-R. ESSVPN.com slash TMGW and you can get an extra three months free expressvpn.com slash TMGW. Oh um, my God. We, I mean, like, uh, travel really does that for you. I'm trying. Oh, speaking of flying, there is a news story that I saw forever ago that, uh-huh. um, that I think is so interesting. Let me know if you've heard of this. Have okay. you seen that there's a company, there's a jetpack company in the uk that has started basically working with um their version of paramedics uh okay in training them to use jetpacks to get to like places that are hard to get like the jetpacks like that like propel you into the sky rocketeer (laughs) wait these are now safe to use on land people use these on land well I think it's all in a test phase. But what's cool, though, is like, okay, like they simulated there was an injury by like a hiker 
you know yeah. and that and that in order it says like they did this fake fake injury to test yeah. it and the journey because it have to be on foot right since it's on, would take an hour and 20 minutes wow was cut down to three minutes and 30 seconds with the jetpack wow okay to like, so, for like someone to get up there help with the life-saving stuff and then if like a helicopter gets there or like if they have to like pull them down whatever right. but it says it's like if you're a cardiac patient or somebody that's in critical care an hour and 20 minutes it's too long yeah yeah so, so it's the says the chief test pilot at gravity industries so they get right. a trained professional up there via jetpack wow i didn't know that these were becoming more um reliable I, my only experience with them is viral videos of people in the ocean trying to <laughs> yeah, like with take the water. Off. yeah no <laughs> it says it says um so far more than 500 people of different sizes and fitnesses fitness levels have learned to fly the jet suits and wow. it can be ma- and it can be mastered in a day <gasps> okay I think that's it says it really could work interesting for, like, people caught in avalanches things like yeah. that where normally yeah. they have to like helicopter and like do the weird ladder down yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Like, they can just like get up there make sure you're not dying and then get you out safely also all of the rescue videos are gonna look epic fucking <laughs> dope just, <laughs> a guy on a jetpack <laughs> be like here i come <laughs> wow okay so sometimes technology is cool. not all bad i thought um, that was really cool i agree i found this story this morning it's also from the uk and it blew oh. my mind. It's still <gasps> blowing my mind. Um, there is a there's this guy who has a profession um, called the coffin confessor. OK, I don't know if you've heard of this. Oh, I so, had definitely have not. So this guy uh, somewhere in the UK is basically he used to be a private investigator. And now he has somehow started this business where people that are on their deathbed call him tell him something they need fixed or taken care of that they don't want their family to like know about (gasps) and he handles it for him for them wow so people tell him their deepest darkest secrets uh let me see that (laughs) it is the freaking craziest story this guy's name is bill and he's been doing this yeah he's been doing this since 2018 this is how it started a client i guess a private investigator client that he had before uh was dying and offered to pay this private detective ten thousand dollars to crash his funeral and kick out an old friend who had been trying to get it on with his wife oh uh, my god (laughs) yeah he wanted to he wanted to make sure this guy that was trying to cheat on uh make it sleep with his wife was not at his actual funeral it has escalated now that he's this whole story this is one of the craziest stories um that he's now taken care of he got a call from a nurse a care nurse and she said that i've got a guy here that's dying he had a fall in his home he's petrified um he can't go home and he's petrified what his sons might find in his home and he needs to get it cleaned. That Um, would be mine. Yeah. Can (laughs) you, can you come and talk to him? He's like freaking out. You're the only person he wants to talk to. He said he met with this bloke. Bloke, of course. Yeah. 88 years old. And he said like, what's your concern? He said, I have sex toys at home Mm -hmm. and I have three sons who are on their way to the house to clean it up because they know Mm -hmm. I'm not going to come home. And he goes, sex toys, okay, not a big deal. He gave him instructions and a key to go to his place into this like secret room. It was a full sex dungeon that yes. this man had in his room or yes. in his house that he wanted this guy to take care of before his three sons showed up. And this um, coffin confessor says when he got there, it was like such a uh, well done sex dungeon that you wouldn't know on like first glance that these were all sex toys like they look like just modern pieces of art and they were kind of uh, hung up on the walls to look like you know decorations and they had like mm-hmm. you know flowers in some and stuff like that so it wasn't so d- uh, flowers <laughs> it was a bit more discreet <laughs> I guess so he- on first look it's a, a tasteful vase and then it's a fleshlight yeah, then he goes, um, 
You wouldn't know that they were all sex toys. They looked like a lamp or things hanging on the wall. They might have been handcuffs, but at the same time, they were so nicely done with flowers or something. And I was like, oh, that's pretty unique. Oh, shit. I know what that is now. And it said it took him about three hours to clean up uh, everything down there and get rid of it for this guy. Wow. <laughs> Insane. That's amazing. Also, like, first of all, I just want to say, if you're listening to this, we got dibs on asking this guy if he can have his life rights because <laughs> yeah. that would make an amazing series and or just standalone movie. But also, uh-huh. it totally makes sense because, like, maybe it's not something as big as a sex room, but, like, right. if if you if it wasn't, like, an expected slow roll and you were right. like, oh, shit, no, I just straight up got in a car crash, like, something like that, and you're yeah. like, I just need you to go clear my internet history. Yeah, like exactly. I just this, I just don't know what was playing on my laptop when I right. closed it this morning. <laughs> right, right. Or I hate this piece of shit. Can you make sure he doesn't show up at my funeral? Yes. <laughs> this guy, he says uh um he his upbringing gave him the ability to not care about the those that are left behind. All of his focus is on his clients and their needs. So this man wow. has been through some shit and he is helping other people that want to hide their shit after their death do it discreetly for a price. <laughs> so I obsessed with mind. this story. I blew my mind. Obsessed. Now it makes me wonder how many other people are either going to get into this business and mm-hmm. or. Um, right. He only has a this. region. You right. Know? He's overseas. So who knows what's going oh. here? It's like that. I read a BuzzFeed article months ago about. The woman that has that um, bridesmaids for hire business, like you can pay her to come be your maid of honor. And I've read it's about wild. this a lot before, and I just feel like, like, are people really doing this, or she, is this the, just? Uh, I read a BuzzFeed a article a while ago, and it's like she's had a thriving business since like 2019. That she's like, people want someone at their wedding that isn't like emotionally attached to the situation yeah. and is literally just going to be there to be basically like an assistant for this person. <laughs> yeah, I think she said something like the craziest thing that's ever happened at a wedding for her was that she helped a bride run away before she got married. Whoa. That she got cold feet and she was like, all right, I got no ties to this family or your now non-future husband. I'll get you a taxi and get you out of here. <laughs> See, to me, and there probably is a, a movie I haven't seen, but it just sounds like a Katherine Heigl movie. Yes. That's like, I, my job was to get in there and, and then I fell in love with the groom. Uh, yes. Yeah. Like it's Well, it's the wedding planner. Except there that she's is. a for for hire bridesmaid as opposed <laughs> to the one. I just pitched you the wedding planner. I was like, so am I, how is this not a movie where a girl gets her heel stuck? In, right. in, in a manhole and then is saved because of a dumpster and then she hates M&M's. You know, uh, like, or brown, she, only eats the brown M&M's. What's that? What's, oh, I forget what that movie is. That shit is crazy. J-Lo. Uh, I know. Work. Happy marriage, J-Lo. Killing uh, it. An animal story that I read about that I don't think we've talked about before, but maybe we have. That someone, I'll stop you if I remember it. Someone sent this to us. Uh, or tagged us or something um, that manatees use their farts to swim. You know I that? think we have talked about this. Yeah, yeah. that they hold in their gas. <laughs> I figured we did. I, We've covered a lot about animals <laughs> and their flatulence. But this one I couldn't remember and I was like, oh yeah, okay, they hold their gas in when they want to float and then when they want to get uh, propelled down into the depths, they just let it all rip. I'm like, what? I think, oh Control. no, we've talked... <laughs> We've talked about how we, if we were to pass, how we'd be nervous a big fart would scooch us across the floor. And <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to pay the coffin confessor. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay him $5,000 to tell everyone that he farted <laughs> at my open uh, casket. Yes. I will call and be like, I need you to come here and somehow just let out, let out my butthole. Yeah, just I need get you it to play some... Uh, big bass house music so that <laughs> this <laughs> doesn't get noticed by everyone. I need you to come and say one of her wishes was to play Renaissance on repeat <laughs> yeah. for the three days following. Oh my gosh, we have got to write that movie. That is amazing. There's so many movies Ooh. to write here. I know. Oh, manatees are so cute. Have you ever hung out with one? No, not that I know mm. of. I might have been in water when they're there, but they were probably farting and down in the deep. So I didn't see. 
<laughs> it is I think crazy. They're, I think they're river creatures. They'll like float a lot. There's like rivers in Florida, probably like near where Elliot is from, uh, yeah, that probably. are like crystal waters, and you can like take out clear bottom kayaks and just kind of do mm. it with the manatees. I've always wanted to do it. Well, they're, yeah, it says that they eat between 100 and 150 pounds of vegetation a day. Uh, get in line. Yeah, so obviously <laughs> the methane comes from the vegetables. <laughs> yes, as someone who has been strictly vegan before. Yeah. I should I should have started my swimming career. We've all, I mean, that's how, if I need to go uh, scuba diving, I'll just have a bunch of cauliflower before I head out and see how it helps out. <laughs> Oh, girl, you'll pop back up. You'll get the men's. I know. I don't mean. I get eaten by a shark because they think I'm attacking them. Oh, man. It's so stupid. It's yeah. so stupid. Oh. <laughs> well, okay, what? wait. Last story that I just okay. saw. Um, I got, maybe you've I got seen a couple this. little things, but I'm enjoying this storytelling. This one's interesting. Miller High Life is partnering Ooh. with Tipsy Scoop. Um, Tipsy Scoop makes alcohol infused ice cream, which I didn't know about. So now mm-hmm. I'm very curious about. They're mm-hmm. making a flavor called Ice Cream Dive Bar. And it is supposed to recall the flavor of peanut shells on a bar floor. What? Um, yeah. The product combines beer, peanut swirl, tobacco smoke flavor, caramel, and a dark chocolate dip. It's designed to mimic the peanut shells frequently, frequently found on bar floors <laughs> wow yeah. um, like, i don't know if i want to be eating no i don't know if i've ever looked at a bar floor and go that looks delicious <laughs> but also i don't go to a dive bar and go this is where i want food like no. in general with the air and whatnot but i mean mm. i think individually yeah those could be kind of good but all mm. those flavors together like did you have one of those like steakhouses growing up in your neighborhood where you could throw the peanut shells on the floor oh i thought yeah i um lone star lone star steakhouse and i was like this is lawless um (laughs) and (laughs) i went on one date there i remember when i was in college and i was like i'm just i can just throw them i can just throw them okay (laughs) this seems like the epitome of trashy behavior but i'm just gonna i'm not gonna throw them yet i'm just gonna scooch them off the end of the table we'll do a little test yeah. run well because yeah exactly because it, it went against everything you're taught where you're like but what if i eat it? but should i just should i put it under the booth or and then yeah. you get crazy and you're like well do i do i put my i just turn this into sweet tea do i throw the sugar <laughs> they're gonna sweep it anyway so at this point <laughs> is it only peanut shells i can throw down there because is, a sweep is a sweep this is also when i had been working in uh restaurant service so i yes. was like i can't really bring myself to do this <laughs> like this is so rude okay three things <laughs> yeah three things number one uh, i would be terrified working there because yeah. it's just like so you're just making a mouse feast and they're yeah just, and how are you not falling all over the place well number two we had one of these uh, yeah. by the community college where I'd have my dance recitals. Mm-hmm. And we had like the solo recital in the afternoon and the dance one at night. So in between, that was the nicest place to go. My yeah. grandmother, my grandmother slipped and did a split. <laughs> Four people had to come up and help my grandma net off the See, floor. That must she happen did. all the time. And that's my third thing. As a, a place that doesn't want a bunch of lawsuits, yeah. do they now do they either a make servers sign release forms you know what i mean or b do they have some type of like really good traction like are they wearing hiking boots that's what i'm like are they wearing (laughs) the boots that people climb trees with at like the great outdoor games (laughs) as someone who has gone to lumberjack feud (laughs) and tried during hey usa season two (laughs) yeah like or just full-on like cleats are they wearing cleats Which, you know, I, I mean, look, I, I, in theory, back in the 90s, it sounded so fun. But it was now, crazy. I don't, I wonder if that still exists. It can't. Yeah. But I mean, like, that was the age of ball pits. That was the age of yeah. everything gross and scary. Yeah. Uh, but fun. <laughs> yeah. But That's fun. where our immune systems really developed themselves because we were exposed to nothing but germs growing up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, if you are listening to this right now yeah. and you either work, manage, or have previously been employed by... Uh, an establishment that allows you to throw peanut shells even welcomes it. Yeah. Give us the scoop. Give us us the behind the scenes scoop. (laughs) Let us know what's going on with that.
<laughs> I can't imagine. I can't imagine. I can picture you in high school being like, do I? And I, I don't, can I? Should can I? I? I what the, about my straw wrapper? <laughs> yeah. What if I accidentally <laughs> drop something and they think I'm just taking advantage of this system and I have to go, I'm sorry, that one was an accident, but bam, those are for free. <laughs> we need some rules. Oh, uh, man. Well, this has been fun, Helbig. I also have no idea how loud I've been in a very quiet <laughs> hotel. <laughs> same, no same. clue. Uh, excellent. Well, you didn't say anything too compromising. No, so no, no. Good. Everything was good. I only said <laughs> flashlight once, which is a new record. So there you go. Oh, uh, this got weird. Uh-huh. This might get weird. <laughs>